Thank you. First, you are the first person that you mentioned that English troop was defeated by Afghan people. At that time, there was no discrimination, there was unity, and there was good power among people, and they believed on, uh, on their strength and power, but they uh, defeated the uh, uh, army of the English uh, red-coated uh, people. Uh, but uh, it has a good message that Afghan people should keep their unity and peace in Afghanistan. And the first starting point of defeat of British people was uh, plane of Kalaikazi. If you put yep. that name, it will be better. It's here. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I found the topic very interesting and also an interesting time. Uh, well, uh, I think you are the first one that you have mentioned that Shah Shuja was a scholar. And also we know, we knew about that he was a poet and uh, also I think a little bit patriotic. Yeah. Although the people of Afghanistan called him uh, not so. Uh, uh, we know that uh, Shah Shahjahan's brother was a king here, Shah Zaman, and he was made blind, and he got for revenge. And of course, those who got for revenge, they will do something. But at first, we say that he was deceived. We, we don't want to say that he was unpatriotic. He was deceived by the British. And he was brought, and he didn't know that he deceived. But when he was in palace there in Balahisar, when the people went to congratulate him, he, it is mentioned in most of the book that he was uh, uh, telling them that he is deceived. You can continue your jihad against British, and I have no power. This is what he has said in many books. And uh, I think uh, uh, <coughs> there, there was also a time that uh, this great game came into being in that time that you have talked a little bit between um, Russia and the Great Britain in that time and this word was coined by a British colonel I have forgotten just the colonel. name right? yeah. colonel or colonel and, uh, <clears throat> and I think uh, I want to ask you a question if you can frankly answer, uh, is it still that great game going on right now? Uh, or whether that is ended? Maybe, maybe with many players, not two at that times. Uh, and. Uh, uh, well, I, 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 I can also, answer I that. I also heard that you have called. Uh, 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 Abdullah Chakzai uprising because of a slave girl, and also the people of Afghanistan called him a great mujahid and a great leader. But I don't know how how can we um, connect this matter to. Uh, sometimes you see this kind of uh, yeah. uh, uh, thing may happen, but uh, I I do not believe in such kind of great evidence to 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 be called by a slave girls. And uh, also, you called uh, uh, Shah Shah to be disgraced by Barak Zarif, mostly. But I don't think so, because he himself said that he is uh, encircled by British uh, forces. But this may be a little bit <coughs> true, but not that much. And also, you mentioned that uh, you have uh, given some kind of name to uh, uh, McNaughton and Burns, that they were actually the mastermind of British forces, the stupid people, but I don't think they were stupid, they were very clever people. Because <laughs> Burns, was, Burns was the 
person that he encouraged all the British forces to come to Afghanistan, and you, you have mentioned about the, uh, that he has uh, said something about the cowl in the gardens, in the orchards, in the beautiful place, that he encouraged all the forces to come here. Uh, and also, you have called that Wazir Akbar Khan did not take part uh, so much, and you mentioned some other things. That is also true. This may be somehow true. But you see, <coughs> McNaughton, which was the mastermind of British forces, you see, he, he was killed by Wazir Akbar Khan. How can we deny the role of Wazir Akbar Khan? And he followed the British forces up to the end. And uh, these were all my questions. I, I, I wish you. I think we should have a little conference, you and I, and address each one of those. That you'll find the answer to my question in, in the book. Um, it's 560 pages long, so uh, I give the evidence for everything that I say. But to answer the point, first of all, Burns. What was most interesting for me, uh, one of the most interesting things in the Afghan sources, was how Burns, who is regarded as a very dashing hero uh, by, uh, in the British sources, uh, in the Afghan sources, is looked on as sort of shaitan. He is this deceiver. He gives money. He lures people astray. And uh, particularly the, um, the Akbar Nama has all this dialogue in it of, of Burns uh, offering money and pulling people into the pits of hell. And uh, so from the Afghan point of view, the British are seen, and again, this is ironic into the cantonments. They are terrorists because they attack civilians, uh, such as give what the Afghans regard as the proper, um, as the proper the women and the children, the innocents. Uh, and these characters like Burns and McNaughton, who in the British sources are remembered as... I mean, inevitably, in any dispute between two people, you'll have different attitudes on either side. But uh, it's very... what we The great game. Is the great game still going? Well, the great game clearly isn't still going in the way that it was. It, Britain is no longer occupying India. Are all, are all independent states now. But it is true, I think, that Afghanistan is still in many ways, a strategic asset. And I'm talking to some elders from Gundamuk. Uh, and um, it's over. It's just their politicians who deny it. These are the last days of the Americans. Next, it will be China. But uh, it's interesting to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> and regarding you said now US is leaving and then it could be Russia, so what do you think we should change the name of the country? <laughs> Can we call it the grave for for super power? Well it is. I didn't know that story about the, the burying the treasure. Very interesting. Thank yeah, you. I Well, I think, I think this very important question. One more question? Let, let's do one at a time, because I forget them like I did with the last gentleman. So we just one, one question at a time. So the, the motives. Very, very important question. And difficult to answer, because in any action, I come here today. Uh, I did it partly because Nancy's my friend, but also partly because I want to sell some books. Uh, you know, we have in any reasons for doing something. So on a, 
big human scale, a war like this has, and uh, the decision to join or resist, pay up your family's livelihood, is your wife and children going to be okay? You know, there are a million things which people are thinking about. Afghan accounts, the rhetoric, the langu public language used is the jihad, that you're doing this for, there are many other motives too. So, Amanullah Khan Lugari loses his lands in the reorganization that Captain Trevor does. If you look at the Tajiks, Mir Masjidi and Mir Haji, they were offered money by McNaughton and by the spy master Claude Wade to rise up against Shah Shuja in 1839. As have they conquered Ghazni and Kandahar, but because behind him, in Kohistan, the Tajiks are to the side of the British in 1839, is the crucial turning point for Dust Muhammad. He realizes he has to just, and he has the, he's writing these letters from 1840. And McNaughton says, these are single men, they can't control their lusts, what can I do? So he doesn't do anything to stop it. And this is, his family has got the letters which they published, uh, which survived in the, um, in the National Museum, and there's other stuff in the uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, which have recently come to light. So you can look at these letters, but you've got, it, it, to my mind, it's very difficult to say, the reason for an uprising is this. The reality is that if we were all to go to war tomorrow, everyone in this room would have different motives for joining it or not joining it. And, and, and so you've got to look at the individuals and try and get as close to them by using the original letters and diaries and try and work out why they make the decision. Because you don't fight a war lightly. No man ever goes to war without good reasons. And no man will take up an arms and take up a gun and risk his life unless several things uh, are, you know, make him do it. So it's a complicated thing. <laughs>